Today I'm going to be going through my 2020 Bujo, talking about the spreads and the themes for each month, and just kind of some of the things I learned doing my Bujo this year. So starting off with January, the theme for this month was black and white, minimalist, and simplicity. Typically, my my Bujos in the past have been very scrapbook like really big about filling all of the pages and filling them up as much as possible and for this new month in the new year I decided to do something a little bit different. Black and white photography is I guess it's one of the most simple forms of photography because it it's like black and white. <laughs> um, it's very simple in terms of the color scheme. It's easy to look at so I felt that black and white would fit that simple minimalistic theme very well. I like that I started the final page off the way the first page started with this grid picture collage thing um, and those receipts that I used were real receipts. I decided to get a little extra creative and use some of the receipts that I have in my wallet. Moving on to February, February's theme was Alice in Wonderland, um, but more of a pastel um, sort of take on it. Alice in Wonderland is one of my most favorite childhood stories. Everything about the aesthetic um, and the original story is, is one of my favorites. I've read it over a dozen times, and I kept meaning to do an Alice in Wonderland themed spread at some point, and I just never did, so at the beginning of the year when I was deciding my themes for each month, I chose February to be Alice in Wonderland so that I could uh, fulfill that desire to do an Alice in Wonderland theme. The spreads for this month didn't turn out quite the way I wanted them to. I wasn't feeling particularly creative this month, I guess, and when I try to force myself to be creative, sometimes the results are a little disappointing for me. Aside from the final week, that was pretty much the only spread that I really felt super happy with. March's theme was romantic pinks. Uh, Marilyn Monroe was someone I wanted to kind of use as an ongoing centerpiece of sorts. Marilyn Monroe is one of my most favorite people of all time, so I, <laughs> any chance I get to include her, I take it. This was one of my favorite months in terms of aesthetic. I loved the pinks and the softer tones and the different paintings and such that were included that gave it a very romantic, elegant sort of vibe. I made a mistake. The last week of February should have been the first week of March. I miscounted the weeks somehow and thought that there were five weeks in February without double checking. So that is why there's only three weeks of March. The theme for April was living in Japan with the main colors being pink and navy blue, or blues in general. I wanted this one to be very colorful and to have a lot of doodles and to be a little bit more scrap book like a little more carefree. I particularly love week two's spread or I guess it was technically week three. I love the little phone <laughs> that I made based on my own phone. I had my goals for the week in the Instagram picture that's there. I just love that little particularly creative detail. <laughs> In week four, I of course had to include my girls' perfume. I just thought that they worked really well with this color scheme. The theme for the month of May was Mellow Yellow. I decided to include a picture of Heisei Jump member Yamada Rosuke as the main image for the month. His birthday is in the month of May, and I kind of associate the month with him somewhat. So I decided to include a lovely picture of him, as well as a lovely quote of his that I personally find very inspiring. One of my favorite things to do is to go on Pinterest and look up different weekly spread ideas. Some people are so creative with the way they do their spreads and sometimes I find that I fall into particular patterns and I do the same sort of style spreads. And this year I wanted to branch out and try new things so I took some inspiration from Pinterest and I, I made them my own but largely this one was heavily inspired. I'll, I'll put the user in the video. I really love the color yellow. It's, it's one of my personal favorites. I particularly love the combination of blues and yellows. There's just something so refreshing about it. But for the remainder of the pages, I used mostly yellows. On the third week, I used a picture of Chin and Yuri, who is also a member of Heisei Jump. He's my favorite. <laughs> this picture has a lot of yellow tones to it, so 
it just fit really well with the general vibe I was going for and so I included him even though the opening page was a picture of Yamachan. I gotta be honest, it was surprisingly difficult to find a picture of Yamachan in yellow. <laughs> I spent like an hour on Pinterest looking for one. I wasn't lucky enough to find two of them that would fit, so Chinen it is. <laughs> on the final two pages of the month, I tried to continue with that sort of doodly, carefree vibe that April had. So I did a lot of doodling on the pages and on the pictures. Typically, I don't do that. It was out of my comfort zone, but it was also really fun. It was a new thing to try, and I, I really liked the outcome of it. The theme for June was retro red. Retro and, and vintage aesthetics are some of my... Uh, most favorite. I've kept meaning to include it in my journal for some time and I just was never able to make it work. I think last year I did like a retro yellow sort of theme for the month of June if I remember correctly but usually by the time June hits I get less creative with my spreads as summertime rolls in and I typically don't end up really decorating my bujo during those periods of time so often I don't end up doing the retro theme or really making much use of my bujo during that period of time when the retro theme just feels right during summer. It just really suits it. So for this year, I decided to really get in there with <laughs> with June to make good use of it. I wanted them to be very crafty and again, maintain that sort of carefree vibe. July was pretty in peach. I was torn between using a more pinky toned peach and a more orange toned peach because I love them both so I just kind of mix them throughout and I, I actually really love the way these particular spreads turned out. Definitely my favorite out of the entire year. It was particularly creative aside from the very last month where I didn't really know quite what to do with this last spread and so I kind of just turned it into somewhat of a collage and I don't really love the way it turned out. I thought it might grow on me eventually and it didn't. I do love the little peaches I drew everywhere but other than that the last spread's definitely my least favorite. Actually probably my one of my least favorites of the entire year. Otherwise it was a very good month for pretty aesthetic spreads. The month of August, the theme was Anne of Green Gables. Another favorite childhood story of mine. I have all the books. My nanny gave them to me a couple years ago. This really beautiful set. To this day, it remains one of my most favorite stories. I, I intend on reading them again sometime soon. For the month of August, that's my nanny's birth month. I, I can't help but associate that month with her, so I often will do my spreads based on things that remind me of her. And Anne of Green Gables is one of those things that we share a love for. And of course, sunflowers being heavily featured because they're her favorite flower and she's my most favorite person. I got new washi tape over the summer and so you can see that I started incorporating them a lot more into my spreads during this time period. The month of September's theme was orange, both the color and the fruit. <laughs> These spreads were some of my most creative of the entire year but unfortunately they didn't get much use because um, September was kind of a bad month for my mental health and so I wasn't really making to-do lists because I wasn't doing much of anything, which is a shame because otherwise these spreads were really nice and probably would have looked really cute filled out. Alas, they are blank. This final page, I wasn't quite what, sure what to do with. Um, it only had three days in the week. I love the general vibe, especially of that page on the left, that sort of cutout picture kind of thing going on that was particularly creative for me. It's unfortunate that it was wasted in a spread that literally didn't get used and was rather uncreative overall. Here we come into October. The month of October's theme was Harry Potter, again one of my other favorite childhood books I suppose, and that's kind of a common theme. If the spreads were based around particular colors, then they were based around childhood books that I love. This thing with the map, the way I envisioned it and then the actual result wasn't quite the same. I don't quite love how it turned out. Hufflepuff is my house, so I decorated the first page based on the Hufflepuff house and made gold a reoccurring theme. I was admittedly less creative this month. I think that's pretty obvious by how plain the spreads are. I was really struggling to come up with unique and creative ways of displaying the pictures and I just wasn't really with it, to be honest. Because October was such an uncreative month for me in general, I'm pretty disappointed with how the spreads turned out. I don't think I particularly love any of them. Definitely one of my worst months of the year in terms of overall creativity. November's theme was cozy neutrals and although a lot of these spreads weren't the most creative 
of this year. Visually, they were some of my most favorite. I love the color combinations and how warm and cozy it feels. I think it really suits the month of November. They were simple but still charming. For the final page of November, I decided to dedicate it to Tsunayuri. His birthday was on the 30th of November and so I included him there up at the top along with a cute little birthday cake. But again, just like with the last week of July and the last week of September, I didn't quite know what to do with this page. I typically break my pages up from Monday to Sunday and on days of the week where the month goes from one month to another, I usually cut it off and will only include the days that are still within the right month. It's the last day of November and then all the other days fall in December. Normally I would just pop Monday over into the next spread, but I didn't quite think too much about that until it was too late. I love the colors and the general aesthetic of it, I just don't quite know how I feel about the execution. For this particular spread, I included more pinks. Chinin's color in the group is pink, so that was a little bit of a nod to his member color, while also still keeping with the cozy neutrals theme of the month. December's theme was Winter Wonderland. I feel like overall it suited a Christmas theme much more than Winter Wonderland. I kind of changed it when I was deciding my pictures for the month. Gingerbread men were much more of a theme throughout than anything else. For the final page of December, I included a picture of Sukiyari up in the upper left hand corner. I decided to come back to the doodling scrapbooky sort of concept that I kind of lost over the last few months. I found this year I was struggling to fill out my bujo. Rather than using my bujo to keep track of my to-dos, I end up doing that on my phone and then updating my bujo at a later date, sometimes days later, and that kind of defeats the purpose of a bujo. Doing all of that on my phone and then just adding it in for the sake of filling out my spreads just doesn't really make much sense. For 2021, I've bought a bunch of double-sided tape. I think that if my journal is more practical, I'll use it more consistently and I'll get some use out of it. And if not, I could just drop the concept and take the general creativeness that I get from these bujos and instead put them into a different type of journal. So that brings us to the end of my 2020 bujo. I will be back with more bujo videos in the new year. Thank you so much for watching. Happy new year, everyone.